All right, I was going to show you how to do coding challenge number three using Tidyverse. Since this RStudio is a fresh install on this computer that I'm working on at, uh, on campus, uh, I had to install Tidyverse and it took a bajillion hours and finally didn't install. Uh, and that's something that happens sometimes. This is one of the challenges we deal with, particularly when you're working on your own computer. It's not just our coding you're working on, it's also managing the computer, which can be a pain sometimes. Which is why Replit is such a nice tool, with the caveat that Tidyverse doesn't really behave super well on this. But let me show you the workaround I have done so far. So I have created a template called Tidyverse with Markdown. So we're gonna use that uh, and let's call this Coding Challenge 3 and we'll create. Now it's gonna be doing a bunch of stuff in the background. It has to load uh, extra software, uh, but it should be okay. So let's see what we've got in main.r. And let's see what happens when we run this. Now it's loading in all that stuff. And what it should do is it should load in the library Tidyverse, load in the built-in data set Star Wars, print the head of Star Wars, uh, and then do some stuff to do with this markdown stuff that we're not going to worry about for right now. Uh, but what it's ultimately going to be doing is building on top of what works nicely in Replit, which is base R, it's bringing in a bunch of other stuff it needs to do more than that. And all that stuff is hidden in these configuration files. I believe the replit.mix is where we've got sort of most of the action going on uh, to allow this stuff to work. All right, so far it looks like it's working well enough. Close these and we will see if it does something. Uh, now, the other part of this is that you need to get the files that we're going to use. So let's go ahead and while we're here, we will set an upload option. We're going to upload files. I have those in my folder for coding challenge 3, county flows, and pop.csv, comma separated values. I'm going to upload those. While this is doing stuff, I'm just going to start a little bit of coding. Um, I'm going to do just sort of the real basics. Uh, and actually, for that matter, yeah, actually, I'm going to leave that. Uh, so, we want to load the data. So, we'll say pop read underscore CSV pop.csv and flows read underscore CSV county flows.csv. And then we will combine those, df, this sort of just a generic temporary non-descriptive name for data frame. Our data frame is going to be, we'll do a full join of pop and flow. So I'm actually going to do the other order. I'm going to do flows and pop. It doesn't actually matter which direction you do, not for full join. It would matter if we're doing right or left join. Uh, left join would mean we would keep everything in flows and only keep the rows in pop that also correspond with that. Uh, so as an example, if you were looking at, say, state population data, and then this was, say, data from the NBA on their teams based on their locations, not all states have NBA teams, not all NBA teams are in states. A full join would keep everything an inner join would only keep the data that's in both of those data frames. Left join would keep you know, all the stuff in pop that corresponds with the states there, uh, but it would keep all the stuff that doesn't have a match on the other side. Um, you'll, that'll make more intuitive sense in the future. For now, just full join is good enough. Uh, as you can see, this is still taking some time. It's been, what, like, four minutes that that's been loading in. So don't sweat it if it takes time. I think the last time I did this, it took about five minutes to normally load. I would tell students, if you're gonna do this, 
load the template at the start of class while we're doing attendance and that stuff. Um, yeah, this is why we want to work on our local computer. With the uh, other hand being that sometimes we work on our other computer and we get these problems. All right, so uh, DF full join. This should work. We'll find out in a minute. And then the other part is uh, mutating to add columns and then summarizing to get the summary stats. So mutate new columns and then summarize uh, in slash out columns. So hypothetically we've loaded our data and then the system will sort of help us check error, but right now it's not going to be doing that. So I want to make some mistakes and then we'll, we'll solve them after. Um, ooh, and there's generate. Let's see what happens when we control I and see what it does. Generate a prompt. Eh, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Well, something to play with later. So I want to say DF is going to be itself, but I'm going to mutate. So. Look at this, we've got our first pipe. Uh, this is a very tidy verse way to write things. So we're taking DF, we're going to replace it with itself, which sounds crazy, but a version of itself that we put through some other things. So the mutate we're going to do here, uh, let's say we've got uh, inflow. What do we want? We want in as a percentage. So in percentage will be, uh, let me check here because I did get this stuff. There we go. All right. So mutate out percentage is A to B flow. So we're looking at how many people start in County A and move to County B, and we're dividing that by the population of County A, which is population 2020. Out percentage, we're seeing how many moved from B to A, divided by A's population, and then total A and B gross flow. That's how many people move between the two. Uh, a net flow would be how many people moved out minus how many people moved in, uh, here is out plus in. And we're not worried about getting the exact right thing. We're just worried about the tool. So I'll, I'll do A and B gross flow. That's fine. If you do net, I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. So we've mutated those new columns. And then we're going to create a summary. So let's call this summary stats. Will be DF, which we will put into summarize. Uh, and there's going to be a couple extra steps here, but basically what we're going to do is something like mean out percentage equals out percentage, uh, sorry, equals the mean of out percentage with na.rm equals true. That second bit tells us that we're taking an average, but if we get an na value, which I'll explain in a second, we want to just remove that. So if you try and average the numbers one and 10, right? The average of one and 10 is five and a half, right? Or the average of one and two is one and a half. Let's be even easy. The average of one, two, and three, well, that's two. The average of one, two, three, and NA is going to be NA. How do you average not applicable, not a number? Uh, so NA is not a number, right? Actually, strictly speaking, NAN is not a number, but NA is a thing you'll see basically when there's missing data, right? So if we try to average the indicator that there's missing data, we're going to get an NA out of it. So this just says, throw those away, only give me the average of actual numbers. Cool. So that'll be our out percentage, mean in percentage, is going to work similar, mean of in percent 
na.rm equals true. And we can do that for gross as well, but I'm going to leave that to you. Uh, so there is what our mean. I get that right. I feel like. No, that's fine. Uh, it is kind of hard to see if I'm making any mistakes here, but yeah, a little easier to see when we've got the full screen or more of the screen. Uh, and then we can do, let's say, min. Actually, let's do it like this. Mean, let's replace that with min. And then we could do the same thing, replace that with max. Do the same thing, replace that with medium. Same thing, replace that with SD for standard deviation. Now these functions, mean, min, max, median, and SD, these are common R functions that you will use a good amount. Make sure we get our parentheses lined up. Whoops. Ooh, look at that. Process manager. Uh, Kaggle. Huh. wonder why that's using so much. I'm going to close that tab if it's eating up my memory. So, what we've got here, I've got the basic summary stats for the in percentage, and it's going to be the basic same stuff for all the others, right? You're just changing in to out. Uh, you do that, and you should, if my code is right, get the stuff that we need. Uh, and then, what we should be able to do at the very end is say write underscore CSV summary stats into a file. Let's call this summary stats dot CSV. So, if we run this, this should load tidyverse. We're not going to worry about the stuff it does with the Star Wars stuff. That's just for demonstration of the template. Should load tidyverse. It should then create these items from the data that we are importing with read underscore CSV, which is the same as read dot CSV, which is the base R version. There's little differences. There's some convenience things built into this, but for our purposes this week, they're going to work basically the same. We import our data. We join the data into a single data frame. And then we use that data frame to calculate these percentages. Right? So remember, A to B flow, this came from the county flows uh, spreadsheet. Population 2020 came from the pop CSV file. We combine those so that we can use both of those. And what it's doing with this mutate is it's doing it row by row. So it looks in a row and it says, what's the A to B flow in this row? And what's the population in this row? And it turns it into a percentage there. Uh, I'm not going to double check this here. I'm just going to upload this as sort of a temporary partial video uh, showing the gist of the tidyverse way to show this, but mostly as a way to highlight a common problem, which is one, getting stuff installed on your computer can be a hassle. Right? Uh, and we can use class time to solve this. Most classes aren't going to involve me talking as much as I did this week. Uh, and then also, you know, we've got a workaround, but getting Tidyverse to work on Replit uh, is its own problem. Oh, I know why it's going so slow. The last time I did this, I had paid for an upgraded account, so it did stuff faster. Uh, it's going so slow because they're giving me 500 megabytes of RAM. <laughs> so there's just not a ton uh, of... I'm, I'm effectively using a very, very slow computer. That's why it's being so slow. Uh, which, again, is a good reason to do this locally on your own computer. But there's problems. Uh, basically, what I'm going to have to do to make this work, and I'll do this probably next week when I've got a longer chunk of office hours, is I'm going to have to install some things on my computer to make this work. So I'm going to have to install stuff in Linux that R will be able to access. Uh, hopefully things work out easier for you. Uh, for me, this might just be a Fedora problem. Fedora is more cutting edge, so maybe there's some uh, interoperability things. Uh, later on this weekend, I will be on my home computer where I already have Tidyverse installed and I'll make a better video of this. Uh, one where we will also go through the base R version when I've gotten a little bit of practice and I'm a little less rusty, so you're not watching me struggle quite so much. All right, so 
Hopefully this is helpful for those doing the tidyverse approach. If you're not doing that, hopefully this is giving you some indication of what we'll be seeing later on in the semester as we sort of drift into that more modern view. Uh, otherwise, uh, let me know in the usual places and I will answer any questions I can help you with. I'll talk to you in the future.